The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Tonight, while you're listening to this program, you might be called to the phone to answer an easy question. Yes? This is the Radio Checking Bureau. Is your radio turned on now? Why, yes, it is. What program are you listening to, please? It's This is Your FBI, just starting. Do you know who sponsors that program? Sure I do. It's my good friends, the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Just last Wednesday, my Equitable representative was telling me about a special life insurance plan they have for men and women on the way up. Believe me, that's one great life insurance plan... So naturally, I know that This Is Your FBI is sponsored by the Equitable Society. And in just 15 minutes, I'll give you full information about the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Tonight's FBI file, The Curious Patient. In studying the criminal records of the six million people in the United States today who have been arrested on charges of having committed a major crime, your FBI learned that less than 50% of those six million committed only one crime and then stopped. That is true despite the fact that they were caught and punished for that first crime. Because in the commission of their second one, they were buoyed by the optimistic thought that they had learned enough by then to commit a crime and not be apprehended. No class of people are given to such undue optimism as the criminal, because optimism is necessary to feed his ego. And so he goes from crime to crime, committing grand larceny one day, kidnapping another day, and the next day, murder. Tonight's FBI file opens in a small town in one of our northwestern states. A car drives swiftly down one of the quiet, tree-lined streets in this village. It stops in front of a large white house. A man hurriedly leaves the car and walks quickly to the front door. Just a minute. Yes? You, Dr. Crawford. That's right. Well, I'm a stranger here in town, but the fellow in the drugstore told me to come here. What about? Oh, it's my wife. Yes? Yeah, she's, she's got to have a baby. She needs some help right away. Where is she? In a cabin about ten miles out of town. Has any other doctor been taking care of her? Uh, yeah, back home. But we've been on a trip. She's not going to be able to make it back there. I see. Doc, can you come right now? Well, I have several other calls to make. She needs help bad. Very well. I'll get my car out and follow you. We haven't got that, that much time. You ride with me. That's the cabin right there. You certainly picked an isolated spot. Oh, you know what housing is. It's the only place we could find. Let's go. Surely. Is this your wife's first child? Yeah. Is there anyone else here with her? No, no, she's alone. Well, I may have to send you back to town to contact my nurse. Anything you say, Doc. Here we are. Is that your wife? Yeah, yeah, open up. Go ahead, Doc. Thank you. Is he a doctor? Yeah. Well, he'd better get right to work. Is this the woman who's expecting a baby? No. But you said your wife was here alone. Doc, that whole wife routine was a phony. What? You've got a real job to do. What do you mean? There's a guy in the next room with three slugs in him, and you're going to fix him up. Why are you wasting time? Okay, Doc, get to work. Now, see here, I didn't come out to I've this... got a gun, Doc. Do like I say. But you have no right... Look, the guy's in real bad shape, so get started. I better tell you this. 
if he kicks off, you go too. Some 30 miles away at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just finishing a long-distance call. Yes. Yes, I see. Well, thanks a lot, Warden. I'll get down there right away. Goodbye. Calling it a day, huh? Jim? Oh, no, Leo, I'm afraid my day is just starting. What? Yes, it was a call from the warden at the county jail. A prisoner broke out down there several hours ago. Who was he? A man named George Brooks. What was he in for? He'd just been convicted on a big payroll job. Over $40,000 was stolen. Was that the one down at Salem? Yes, that's the one. Oh, I remember it. Brooks worked with a partner. The partner was killed. That's it. As I recall it, the money was never recovered. No, Brooks evidently managed to hide it away at some point before he was apprehended. Mm, that's probably the reason for his breaking out. Yes, I know. And why were we called in, Jim? Well, we have a detainer on him. And it's important that we find him, too. And did you get any details on the jailbreak? No, not much. The only thing the warden told me on the phone was that he was sure Brooks was wounded by one of the guards. Have the state police been alerted? Yes, all authorities have been notified. They've already set up an extensive roadblock. Leo, I'm going down there now. I'll give you a more complete story when I return. Jean, will you quit that? What? Walking up and down. Relax, will you? Oh, sure. That's a cinch. Look, there's nothing else you can do. No. You think we could go in there? No. Is that doctor any good? He's okay. How do you know? The drugstore guy in the village said he was the best doctor in the county. Oh. Jean. Yeah? You... You still go for Brooksy, don't you? Are you kidding? Well, what have you got the jumps for? I want him to live for the same reason you do. So we can find out where he planted that dough. Are you sure that's all? Oh, baby. We were washed up before he was sent away. He didn't know that. Well, you knew it. I hope. How do I know from James? Honey, if you don't know about you and me by now, turn in your suit. Okay. Now, can I walk some more? Sure. Oh. Uh, Doc, how is he? I extracted the bullets. Is he going to live? I believe so, yes. Swell. Can I talk to him now? No, he's still unconscious. Now, with your permission, I'd like to leave. Wait a minute. You're staying right here. You asked me to save a man's life. I believe I've done that. I have no further obligation. Oh, yes, you have. I have other calls to make. They can wait, Doc. We ain't satisfied with a guy that's just going to live. We want one who can talk. Are you still here, Leo? Oh, yes, Jim. I'm working nights this week. Oh? How did you make out? Well, I picked up a number of details on the jailbreak, but Brooks is still at large. How did he make the break? Well, the warden said he had a woman visit him last week. She was his girlfriend. Her name is Jean Dodge. Yeah. It's believed that she managed to pass him a gun. He used that gun to subdue a guard, then used the guard as cover and managed to get through the front gate. Yeah, just like that. That's it. As soon as he was outside, the guard eluded him and immediately gave the alarm. There was some shooting, but Brooks got away. And that's the last that was seen of him? Yes, but his trail was picked up. He headed through a patch of woods, and judging from the bloodstains that were found along the way, he must have been rather severely wounded. Well, surprising, then, that he escaped. Well, he had a car waiting for him. Tire tracks were found showing where it had parked, and his trail led right to it. And the car got away before the roadblock took effect. I'm not so sure of that. What do you mean? I have an idea there was a hideout all ready for him, not too far from the jail. Why do you think so? Well, Leo, that's sparsely settled country. There's not many roads. And less than a half an hour after the break, every car was stopped within a 50-mile radius. Oh, I see. And there's another factor that may help. If Brooks was badly wounded, he's going to need medical attention and fast. So the warden's alert... Hey, wait moment. a minute, Jim. What? Something came in a little while ago that ties right up with this. Oh, what is it? There's a doctor missing over in Quincy. Really? What's the story? Well, his wife reported it. A stranger came to their house about 6 o'clock this evening and mm -hmm. told the doctor his wife was going to have a baby. They left in the man's car, and the doctor hasn't been heard from since. Did his wife see this man? No, she was in another room. She just overheard the conversation. Well, did she know where they went? No. I'd better get all the details from her at once. Baby, it's coming up daylight. Yeah. Don't you want to get some sleep? No, I couldn't. 
well, Doc. He's conscious. You mean he can talk? Yes. Oh, nice going, Doc. Now may I leave? Yeah, I'm afraid not. Why? You promised... I can't have you blowing a whistle on us. Gene, go on in and talk to Brooksy. Okay. You've got to let me go. Sorry, Doc. I'm tying you up. Now, see, you... you... Gene, you know what to say to him. Yeah. I'll take care of the doc. Hello, darling. Oh. Hello, Jean. Don't move, honey. Just lie still. Okay. You want anything? No. No, no. George. Yeah. I think I know you pretty well. What you like and what you don't like. Uh-huh. What you like best is the truth. <sighs> That's right, baby. Well... That's why I'm going to tell you this thing. What? That doctor who's been taking care of you. I just now talked to him. Talked to him about you. Uh-huh. What he said ain't going to be so nice for you to hear. Well, come on. Let's have it. He said you're not going to live. Oh. Maybe I did wrong in telling him this, George, but... No, 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 no. Oh, darling. Jean, don't. Don't, Jean. Sorry. Where's... Where's Whitey? In the next room. Does he know? Mm-hmm. George, I know this sounds corny, but... Is there anything you want done? I... I don't think so. What about that dough? Dough? The dough you buried. If there's anyone you want to have it, you can tell me where it is. Well, I... Ooh. I... I got a sister. She could use it. Oh, I'd be glad to see that she gets it, George. Just tell me where to find it. Okay, honey. There's a big red barn. It's on Route 18. Ten miles north of Salem. Uh-huh. Go on. The dough... The dough's in the box, buried right behind the barn. Swell, swell. You'll... You'll make sure my sister oh, gets it. Oh, of course, it. George. But you don't even know her name. Of, uh, of where she lives. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Wait, I'll get a pencil and write it all oh, down. Uh, hold it, hold huh? it. Call Whitey in here. I'd like to tell him about it, too. Sure, honey, sure. Whitey? Yeah, honey? You got the dock all tied up? Uh-huh. Then come on in here. George wants to see you. Okay. Hello, George. Hello, Whitey. Jean told you, huh? Yeah. Oh, tough going, kid. Whitey, there's... There's something I want to tell you. Go right ahead, George. I... I told Jean where I buried the dough. Good. But it was the bum steer. What? What do you mean? I just wanted to see how far you phonies would go. George. Just stay where you are, both of you. No, now, wait a minute. Put down that gun. Look, you. The doc already told me where I stand. He said I'm doing fine. What's more, I know what you two are up to. What are you talking about? I got the word when I was away about both of you. Those were lies. No, no. Why do you no, look no. out? Too late, baby. <laughs> Honey, you were crying over the wrong corpse. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message to men and women on the way up. To men who are confident that one of these days, the boss will be calling them into his office to say, Well, Joe, we like the way you've taken hold here, so we're going to promote you to Jenkins' old job. 
course, that means a substantial increase in salary, too. Did you know that there is a special life insurance plan for men like that? For men who expect to be filling a bigger job and earning more money five years from now than they are today? It's the Equitable Life Assurance Society plan for men and women on the way up. Maybe I'm kidding myself, but I think that means me. So how about telling me a little bit more? Well, this Equitable Society plan for men on the way up has three major advantages. First, it gives you and your family needed protection right now. Second, this equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. Third, this equitable plan is flexible at all times, can expand or contract as you see fit. Sounds okay so far, Mr. Keating. How can I get the whole story? Demonstrate that you consider yourself on the way up by getting in touch with your Equitable Society representative and asking him about this plan. Phone him as soon as possible or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Curious Patient. It was the immortal Bobby Burns who first said that the best laid plans of mice and men off go awry. And as is proven by tonight's case in the files of your FBI, that is true for criminals as well as for everybody else. This case is the perfect example of the lengths to which the criminal mind will go. The complex plans it conjures up in the mighty effort to get something for nothing. The criminal mind is incapable of realizing that the only thing you get for nothing is nothing. And because of his failure to realize that obvious truth, he goes on stealing, lying, cheating, and killing. He lives in shadows, and he trusts no one. And he has one major goal in life. He wants to commit the perfect crime. And he never finds out until too late that there can be no perfect crime. The night's file continues at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Stewart. Hello, Leo. Jim Taylor. Oh, hello, Jim. Where are you? I'm out of Dr. Crawford's house. Have you interviewed his wife? Well, the doctor himself just came home about ten minutes ago. Well, then I sent you on a wild goose chase. No, no, not at all, Leo. I'm very glad that I came here. And did his disappearance tie in with Brooks? Very much so. He was taken to a cabin where Brooks was hiding out. Oh, I see. The man who brought him there threatened him with a gun, made him take care of Brooks's wounds. After he patched him up, the doctor was then bound and thrown into a closet. Well, how'd he get away? Well, there was a fight. Brooks shot and killed his confederate. The man who drove the doctor out there? Yes. Then Brooks and his girl, who was also there, left the cabin and drove away. Well, how did Brooks manage to move? I thought he was badly wounded. Well, the girl practically carried him out. After that, the doctor managed to loosen his bonds and get out of there himself. Has the uh, doctor any idea where Brooks and the girl have gone? No. Uh, could he describe their car? Yes, yes. He gave me everything but the license number. I've already passed it on to the state police. Oh, uh, what's the next move, Jim? Can you get away from the office? Yeah, William just came in. Then get right over here, will you? The doctor will lead us out to the cabin. <laughs> Doctor, is this the room that Brooks was in? That's right, Mr. Taylor. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything here that would tell us where they'd gone. Oh, Jim. Oh, in here, Leo. Uh, I took an impression of the tire treads from Brooks' car. Good. Did you get anything in here? No. no I think we should arrange to get the car around here. If we get the bullet from the dead man's body, it might be helpful to us. Oh, Leo, I just remembered. I think I know who that man is. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, doctor, you say they called him Whitey? Yes. Well, I think I recall a petty thief called Whitey Floyd. There was a wallet circular on him. I looked at it just last week. We'll check on it as soon as we get back to the office. Right. Gentlemen, I wish I could have been more helpful to you. My doctor, after what you've been through, we appreciate your even coming out here. I wish they'd been careless enough, doctor, to let you overhear where they were going. Say, wait. There was one thing. I heard that man Brooks say... I don't think it means very much. Oh, what was it? He remarked 
that they'd only travel at night to lessen their chances of being found. Mm, I see. Jim, they undoubtedly have a specific destination. Oh, yes. I think I can guess where it is. Oh, where? The place that Brooks hid the money he took on the payroll job. Mm. And all we have to do is to find where he hid it. Yeah. Well, Doctor... Yes? Can you recall anything else that Brooks said? Anything at all, no matter how unimportant? Well, I... I didn't get much chance to talk to him. As soon as he regained consciousness, I was tied up. Well, did he say anything to you at all? Uh, let me see. He did speak once, but not to me. Oh, what do you mean, sir? Just as he was regaining consciousness, he mumbled something about R.I.P. Beloved Wife Abigail. R.I.P. Beloved Wife Abigail. Yes, he repeated it twice. Well, that's really cryptic. Anything else? No. I'm positive that was all. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Leo, I think we'd better get a coroner out here, then head back to the office. George. What? Don't you think you should try to get some sleep? No. Why not? I don't trust you. Oh, look, do we have to go over that whole thing again? I wasn't double-crossing you with Whitey. Mm. He made me tell that story about you dying. He said if I didn't do it, he'd... He'd, he'd kill me. No kidding. Look, you got to believe me. Stop yelling, will you? We parked this car out here in the woods to avoid people, not attract them. I'm sorry. George? What is it? If you feel like you do about me, if you still think I was handing you one, why didn't you shoot me, too? Because I needed you. Honest, honey? Just to drive the car. If I could move myself, you wouldn't be here. Hmm. I also need you to dig up that dough. We're really going to get it? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, what's so funny? What a checker game this is. What do you mean? You're still alive because somebody's got to dig up that dough for me. I'm still alive because you wouldn't dare to slug me until I get that dough. (laughs) What a setup. George, that's not true, and you know it. No. Wait till you get your hot little hands on that money box. Then what a rat race that'll be. Oh, stop it. Look, how much longer do we have to park here? As soon as it gets dark, sweetheart, we're on our way. Uh, Jim, the coroner was just here. Gave me the bullet he took from Florence Barney. Good. I'm sending it right to the laboratory. Any word from the state police on Brooks? No, nothing yet. Uh, How are you making out? Well, I've been going through Brooks's complete record. So far, I've only come up with one thing out of his past. What's that? Well, as far as I can tell, he isn't married, never has been. Well, then who is his beloved wife, Abigail? And that remains a mystery. Well, what's that file you're in? Oh, this is a complete report on the payroll sticker. Oh, well, you go right ahead. I'll go downstairs. Wait. What is it? Here's a description of how and where the police apprehended Brooks. Well... I think it clears up the identity of Abigail. Really, Jim? Yes, and if he travels at night, as the doctor heard him say, I think we can catch up with him this evening. I can't say I like this very much. What do you mean? Driving in a cemetery at night, it gives me the creeps. Make you think of why? No. Turn left here. Here. Okay. Now what? Uh, You see that big monument right ahead there? Yeah. Well, stop when you get past it. Why did you pick a place like this to bury your dough? I didn't have any choice. Why not? The cops were chasing me. I came in here to duck them. When I saw they were closing in, I quick buried the money. Oh, is this the place? Huh? Yes, yes. Oh... Now what? Well, you see that little tombstone right over there? Yeah. Get out and see what it says on it. Oh, fine. Come on, move, will you? All right. 
What should it say? R.I.P. Beloved Wife Abigail. R.I.P. Beloved Wife Abigail. Well? This is it. Oh, good. Good. The box is buried right behind the stone. What'll I dig with? Use your hands. It's right under the grass. Oh. Hey. What's the matter? There's a hole here. What? Somebody's already dug it up. Don't give me that. Where is George? You know I can't move. You're, you're trying to cross me again. No, no, no. He's telling you the truth, George. Huh? Don't move, either one of you. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. How did you know we'd be here? Like Brooks here tipped us off to that. What? Yes. The doctor heard you mumbling about the inscription on this tombstone. We couldn't piece it in at first, but when I learned that you'd been arrested here, the rest was easy. Oh, you stupid fool. Brooks, I think a cemetery is a fitting place to tell you that the police want to talk to you about your friend, the late Whitey Floyd. <laughs> George Brooks was turned over to the local authorities. He was tried and convicted for first-degree murder. His girlfriend was sentenced to a long term in the federal penitentiary. And thus, your FBI thwarted another attempt to continue a career of crime. That the two criminals were caught is to the credit of your FBI. Because this was a case that called for trained investigation of every clue. And the added ability to weigh the value of each scrap of information. It is no accident that a special agent arrived at the correct conclusion. For the special agents of your FBI are given long courses of study in the art of investigation before they work on a single case. That is done so that you may be better protected. You. The American people. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. If you are what President Thomas I. Parkinson of the Equitable Society describes as a man with faith in his own future and the future of America, then you'll surely want to learn more about the Equitable Society plan for men on the way up. Exactly how much will this plan cost me? The Equitable Man has the answer. How much protection does it give me right now? Your Equitable representative can work that out in two minutes. Does this plan offer me desirable options? You bet it does. Your Equitable Man will be glad to give you further facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Find him in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Juvenile Shakedown. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Juvenile Shakedown on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.